Good evening. Welcome to the Mind of STEM channel, where you get your daily dose of science, technology, engineering, and math. My name is Leon Jones, and tonight's topic, I'm going to talk about food. This time, I'm going to deal with the flow of food service. The title of tonight's video is the flow of food service. Now, it is important that you understand the flow of food. And particularly when you're working in the restaurant industry, you know, your food goes from your prepping station to your line, to your expediter, to your front of the house personnel, which features the servers and the bartender. Now, one thing you must understand when we are dealing with the flow of food, just like money, food changes hands. Some people don't wash their hands, some people do. This is where you have to be very wise to make sure that all personnel are clean. And it's not just your hands, it's making sure that they have a clean uniform. So let me share my screen, let's get to it as we deal with the flow of food service. The objectives, I'm gonna talk about time and temperature requirements for holding hot and cold TCS food. TCS is time controlled food. Then we're gonna talk about ways of preventing time, temperature abuse and cross contamination when displaying and serving food. Then we're gonna get into requirements for using time rather than temperature as the only method of control when holding TCS food. And last, ways of minimizing bare hand contact with ready to eat food. Now, when I talk about ready to eat food, it's food that has already been cooked and stored. Let me give you an example of food that's already been cooked. If you go to Kroger and you pick up some chicken, sometimes they keep the chicken in the cold bin, and in a hot bin. Well, that's food ready to eat. Also, when pizza is delivered to your house, that's also food that's ready to eat. A better example would be salads. Salads are prepped in the back. They're put out front. You can grab and go. That's food ready to eat. Also, one of the objectives, we're going to identify the following, how to prevent staff from contaminating food during service. Also, how to prevent guests from contaminating self-service areas. I'm going to talk about the possible hazards of transporting food and ways of preventing them. Also, want to talk about the possible hazards of serving food off-site and ways of preventing them. When I say them, I'm talking about contamination. And we're going to talk about the possible hazards of vending food and ways of preventing them. Now, general rules for handling food. And this is why I say it's very important that you should have a thermometer. Because temperature and thermometer go hand in hand because you measure temperature with a thermometer. In America, we use the Fahrenheit scale. Other parts of the world, they use the centigrade or the Celsius scale. So... When we deal with TCS food, we're going to hold TCS food at the correct temperature. And that correct temperature is 135 degrees or higher. That's hot food. Cold food, 41 degrees Fahrenheit or lower. Now, why are we using 41 degrees and 135 degrees? Very simple. Because anything between 41 degrees 135 degrees, that's considered the danger zone. And bacteria grows a lot faster at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, when we're dealing with internal temperatures, we have to use a thermometer to check a food's internal temperature. Now, never use the temperature gauge on a holding unit to check the food's temperature. Remember that. These are general rules for holding food. Guidelines for holding food, because we're going to talk about time. Make sure staff are monitoring holding temper, temperatures regularly. So, 
got to make sure that your staff is doing their job by monitoring temperatures on a regular basis. Also check temperatures at least every four hours. And this is what I've been doing at home. If food has been kept for a long time, I throw it out. You should do that because food is no good after a certain time. Now, when we discard food, we're discarding it because it's past its expiration date or it's starting to grow bacteria. And bacteria can grow in food even if it's refrigerated. So what we do is when we check temperatures at least every four hours, what we're doing, we're making sure that food is 41 degrees Fahrenheit or lower or 100 35 degrees Fahrenheit or higher. If it's not at those two temperatures or higher or lower, we throw it out. Optional, we can check temperatures every two hours to leave time for corrective action. General rules for holding food. This is a big one, reheating food. Never use hot holding equipment to reheat food unless it's built to do so. Hot holding equipment would be your, I call them your, your, your steam machines. You know, you have your, your, your water and your steamer. And that's when you put all your, I call them your tin pans, your steam table. That is hot holding equipment. Also reheat food correctly and then move it into a holding unit. In other words, you reheat to the temperatures and then you can move it to a steam table, but you have to monitor it once you move it to a steam table. Okay, food covers and sneeze guards. You'll see a lot of them at buffets. Cover food and install sneeze guards to protect food from contaminants. Covers protect food from contamination and help maintain food temperatures. When it comes to policies, we create policies about how long the operation will hold food and when food will be thrown out. What about holding food without temperature control? Well, cold food can be held without temperature control for up to six hours if it was held at 41 degrees Fahrenheit or lower before removing it from refrigeration. Also, it has a label specifying time it was removed from refrigeration and time it must be thrown out. Also, it does not exceed 70 degrees Fahrenheit during service. It does throw out food if it exceeds that temperature. It is sold, served, or thrown out within six hours. Also, hot food can be held without temperature control for up to four hours if it was held at 135 degrees or higher before removing it from temperature control. Also, it has a label specifying when the item must be thrown out. And again, it is sold, served, or thrown out within four hours. Holding food without temperature control, we are still on that topic. We getting into regulatory Approval. So to get that approval, you must prepare written procedures, get written approval in advance, maintain procedures, and make procedures available. All right, staff guidelines for serving food. And this is the front of the half of correction, the front of the house staff. Okay, one thing that you must understand is how do we handle dishes? Okay, as you see, this is PowerPoint. Here's the correct way. When you are handling food, you wanna put your hand at the bottom of the plate. You see how they're handling this cake. Okay, glass trays, okay? You grab the glass trays from the ends. You also look at how to pick up a donut, ice. That's the correct way. Here's the incorrect way of doing it. Stacking glasses, picking up 
a bagel or a donut with your hands and then dipping glass in ice, incorrect way. Don't do that. All right, there are guidelines for serving food. So if you preset software, wrap or cover the items to prevent contamination. And listen to this, table settings do not need to be wrapped or covered if extra settings are removed when guests are seated or if settings are left on a table, they're clean, sanitized after the guests have left. Also, never reserve food returned by a guest. Never reserve uncovered condiments. Never reserve uneaten bread. Never reserve plate garnishes. Now, condiments are very tricky because generally only open condiments, you can't reserve them. But unopened condiments, you can. Prepackaged food in good condition, it can be reserved. I didn't say reserved, I said reserved. Now, you're gonna get some restaurants, you're gonna have unwrapped crackers or breadsticks and condiment packets like salt. As long as they haven't been opened, they're allowed to be reserved. Plus, it's a lot of money going down a drain when you're throwing condiment packets out. Kitchen staff guidelines for serving food. So to prevent contamination when serving food. Here's what you need to do if you're working in the kitchen. Avoid bare hand contact with ready to eat food. Again, avoid bare hand contact with ready to eat food. Wear single use gloves. Those gloves are generally disposable. Gloves get holes in them, change your gloves. Use spatulas, tongs, deli sheets, or other utensils. Also use clean and sanitized utensils for serving. Use separate utensils for each food. Clean and sanitize utensils after each task. If using them continuously, clean and sanitize them for at least every four hours. Also, we, we can prevent contamination when serving food buys storing serving utensils correctly between uses. That means you can leave them in the food with the handle extended above the container rim and place them on a clean and sanitized food contact surface. Now, there are also options. You can store spoons and scoops under running water or in a container of water at least 135 degrees. Now, that number 135 degrees is very significant because, again, 41 degrees Fahrenheit to 135 degrees Fahrenheit, that's your, your danger zone. That's when bacteria starts to grow. Okay, also, when we prevent contamination when serving food, something you must understand. Take home containers can only be refilled when containers are designed for reuse, provided to guests by the operation. And of course, take home containers must be clean and sanitized correctly. Now, we're still utilizing take home containers, but we're dealing with beverages. So, Take home beverage containers can be refilled if the beverage is not a TCS food. The container is also refueled, a uh, correction, it's refilled for the same guest. I can say refueled too, because the guest is refueling himself or herself with a hot or cold beverage. But again, when we deal with take home beverage containers, they can be refilled if the beverage is not a TCS food. Also, the container is refilled for the same guests. The container can be effectively clean. Also, the container is rinsed with fresh, hot water under pressure for refilling. 
the container is fulfilled by staff in the operation or by the guest using a process that prevents contamination. We deal with self-service areas. And what do I mean by self-service areas? This is where you get into the buffets like Old Country Buffet and, and Golden Corral. Because usually in self-serving areas, the steam table and the salad bar, they're designed by the use of sneeze guards, display cases or packaging. Also labels are used to identify items. Now, when you are dealing with raw meat, fish or poultry, keep those items separate from ready to eat food. Again, we are preventing contamination in self-service areas. So number one, do not let customers refill dirty plates or use dirty utensils at self-serving areas. Stock displays with the correct utensils and never use ice as an ingredient if it was used to keep food or beverages cold. Again, never use ice as an ingredient if it was used to keep food or beverages cold. Label bulk food in service areas. And this is where you have to make sure that the label is in plain view of the guest and include the manufacturer or processor label provided with the food. Now, as an alternative, provide the information using a card sign or other labeling method. Now, a label is not needed for bulk unpackaged foods such as bakery products if the product makes no claim regarding health or nutrient content. No laws require the item to be labeled. The food is manufactured or prepared on the premises. The food is manufactured or prepared at another operation or processing plant owned by the same person. Of course, the operation must be regulated. Now we're dealing with offsite service. This is when you are catering. So when transporting food offsite, use insulated food grade containers designed to keep food from mixing, leaking, and spilling. Label food with a use by date and time and reheating in service instructions. Clean inside of delivery vehicles regularly. And again, when it comes to temp temperatures, you must check the internal temperatures. Also, when transporting food off site, practice good personal hygiene. Check internal food temperatures. If they are not being held correctly, reevaluate the length of the delivery route or the equipment. Also, just like self-service items, you have the same procedure when we deal with raw meat, poultry, and seafood. Store those items, and I'm talking about raw meat, poultry, and seafood, separately from ready to eat items. When catering, still off site, make sure the service site has the correct utilities, safe water for cooking, dishwashing and hand washing. And of course, garbage containers, they should be stored away from food prep, storage and serving areas and use insulated containers to hold TCS food. So that means when it comes to wrapping raw meat, you wrap it and you store it on ice. You wrap raw meat and store it on ice. Deliver dairy products in a refrigerated vehicle or ice. Also when catering, serve cold food in containers on ice or in chilled containers. There is an option. You can hold food without temperature control according to guidelines. Store ready to eat food separately from raw food. And again, provide customers with directions 
or handling leftovers. Guidelines for utilizing temporary units. So when it comes to temporary units, you must construct temporary units to keep out dirt and pests. Apply food safety rules to food preparation. Also make sure safe drinking water is available for cleaning, sanitizing, and hand washing. Use disposable single-use items. Mobile units. Again, sanitation requirements may vary based on the products. However, the same food safety rules apply to permanent and mobile kitchens. And when you have a mobile unit, you need a special permit or license. And that depends on which jurisdiction. And when I talk about a mobile unit, being in the construction field, we used to call that the roach coach or a food truck. Vending machines, see a lot of vending machines in office buildings. You see them in apartment complexes. In fact, the apartment complex that I live in, we have a vending machine. Now, when we deal with vending machines, to keep food safe in a vending machine, we check product shelf life on a daily basis. So we throw away food past its expiration or use by date. We also throw away refrigerated food prep on site and not sold in seven days. Keep TCS food at the correct temperature. We dispense TCS food in its original container. And last, we wrap and wash food with edible peels before putting it in the machine again. Let me switch the words here. We wash and wrap fresh food with edible peels before putting it in a machine. And again, what I'm doing is giving you information on how to serve food, particularly if you're in a restaurant or even if you are at home. And you should always rotate your food because if you have good personal hygiene, if you practice food safety requirements, you'll not only keep your operation open, but you will keep illness out of your operation. Illness can get your operation to close down and that's due to food contamination. And again, the number one item that should be practiced is proper hygiene. When you follow the procedures correctly, food will be flowing smoothly from the kitchen to your customers. And that's, my commentary for this edition from the Mind of STEM channel. And I talked about the flow of food service-wise, again, on this channel, I'll give you a daily dose of science, technology, engineering, and math. Now, if you cannot find the Mind of STEM channel on YouTube, I also upload the videos to Twitter and LinkedIn. And I also want you all to like, share, and subscribe to the Mind of STEM channel. So on this channel, I'm giving you a daily dose of science, technology, engineering, and math. Till next time, my name is Leon Jones. I want you all to have a wonderful and gracious evening.